Stand with a Girl initiative, we empower girls to be able to achieve their full potentials. And in doing so, we have several thematic areas, education, importantly, sexual and reproductive health, of which family planning is a core. And for us, we being in Abuja, where we are residents, it's also important to know that uh, we have several internally displaced persons camp in Abuja, of course, which is due to the insurgencies and all of that. But also visiting internally displaced persons camp in Wasa, where you have over 5,000 persons and 70% are women and children and from those people we also saw from data that are available that the average children per woman before the age of 25 is actually six that's a whole lot and those are women who live in very deplorable uh, condition economically even health wise in fact it was very sad that several times that we had engaged with them they had called of an engagement to say oh we lost a woman who was trying to have a baby or we couldn't get to 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 the hospital in time so wasa internally displaced person camp has uh, a clinic but it's not well equipped so what that means is if there are complications during childbirth or any form of health complication then it's a problem and we know that family planning saves lives so it was important to begin to see how to engage those women. And for us at Stand With A Girl Initiative, we collaborated with Sidani Initiative for Development, uh, Sidani Initiative and Peach Aid Medical Initiative. And at the camp, we were able to uh, inaugurate and also decorate camp leaders it was important for us because in order for sustainability we and the fact that we know there were a lot of myths and misconceptions so even if we spoke to women to take off family planning it was not enough they needed consent from their spouses they needed their religious leaders the traditional leaders to be able to say it's a good thing to do please go ahead and do it so we had to engage with this religious and camp leaders so they have a structure in the camp the the camp leader the women leader each they have a community because that helps them to distribute the different uh, incentives or palliative that they get so we brought all of those leaders together they were happy because they were also not interested in continually seeing that women die due to childbirth and they could link that up to the fact that women don't have enough time to space birth they also have too many children again it wasn't just us saying stop childbirth it was that we were empowering those women also supporting those men to ensure that those women have uh, are empowered to be able to decide for themselves when and how many children they want to have so it was really a welcome uh, innovation when we got to the camp because it was really tied to saving the lives of women and girls at the IDP camps so basically for us while it was important to increase the uptake of family planning for obvious reasons so that we can help those women plan their lives be able to take up careers and all of that it was also in the wake of covid so it was important to also support those women with uh business grants so that uh, they can be able to support their business we also implemented uh menstrual hygiene management education as well as providing them with menstrual cups so with those cups it means that they don't have to monthly go to get sanitary towels uh, they they can as well just uh, get uh, this cup which lasts for over eight years or a maximum of eight years and that way those women are able to have menstrual hygiene and are able to have good health so specifically we engage with the camp leaders so because we needed to get their buy-in we also engage with the men with the religious leaders and moving forward we also ensure that this uh, we created messages and those messages were in the indigenous languages so while there were several languages on the camp because these are people from different north northeast nigeria we chose hausa which was the predominant language in the camp so they were able to create messages not just in english or pidgin but also in hausa 
that really talks about what family planning is, dispel the myths and misconception. Because again, most times the reason they don't take up this method, it's because they are afraid something will happen. While we recognize that there are side effects, we also needed to let them know how best to manage it and speaking to the other uh, intervention or the other activity as part of our intervention that we carry was also training the service provider so while it was not just enough they had one service provider that was feeding the over 5,000 population we had to speak with him also find out the areas he needed technical support to be able to serve the women better because yes it's one thing to generate the demand it's also another thing to ensure that they have the wide range of contraceptive that they need to be able to plan their lives so we did this in and also with the inaugurated or decorated childbirth spacing champions, which we, we were leaders on the camp, they, we supported them to carry outreaches on a monthly basis to speak to women and other people, and even their fellow men, of course, on the importance of family planning and several other uh, interventions that were done. One of the major steps that we also took was to have a mobile technology intervention and basically we had a toll-free number that was being used by this camp resident. So it's a number that they could call and ahead of that we had had virtual family planning providers who have been trained to respond to all of their questions when they ask and let them know they can go to the clinic to access services. We also made it uh, a point of duty to send them messages uh, weekly monthly at times and those messages was basically to create awareness on family planning to also see if they have questions regarding side effects regarding or any myths and misconception and the virtual family planning providers were always available to respond to uh, those questions and we really saw a lot of turnout uh, people calling the numbers to ask questions about certain, certain side effects that they were, uh, uh, were, were passing through. And because this was just regular phone, it didn't need a very highly technology or I mean a smartphone, it was easier for them to access and the fact that it was free. So it was toll free and they were really happy to engage with those family planning providers via the toll free numbers. Yes, there is a lot of improvement because since 2017 when I've been posting here, honestly, I find it difficult for concerning the family planning. If you are, uh, create the, uh, give them head talk when they are normally come for immunization, when you give them head talk concerning family planning, they don't accept. Except like um, Igbo, they are normally, those people that they have been done it before, they are normally came to us. But when you people came for the great awareness for the community, and then we are done the outreach, and then people, uh, outreach people are starting with a woman, and they will see also call men, so to hear the views and then give them help of God concerning the family planning. Most of them they are accepting the family. Since then, people that are coming in for this uh, program, honestly, there are a lot of improvement. Most of women with their number be men where they are not accepted. Now, now then they are now forced women to come to the as they uh, take the uh, family planning. And uh, also, if you plan people, you people are uh, call them for the training for the family planning. Also, they might they accepted. I'm very grateful, but now, issue of family planning, most of them, they have, they have come in for accept the family, uh, method of family planning. That is it. Honestly, I'm very grateful for, the, uh, for the, all the programs that you people are doing. Honestly, we appreciate that with the initiative because they came here in my camp. Honestly, I see an improvement of what they have come and teach us here, especially about the family, family planning. Uh, before, you see every blessed day, you see born here, our means, the born, born, sharp, sharp. And if you see the small one like this, after six months, 
you see another <laughs> pregnancy again. So honestly, but the time where they came, they tell us how we just do a child's person. So honestly, we see the appointment and we are thanking them and we still need them again, let them come to continue. We were very excited at the end of the project to see that we had 54% increase in family planning uptake by these women. So these were women who would suddenly go for family planning, but we saw that the number actually went really high due to the uh, awareness and all of that. Another very notable achievement for us because we know the role of the uh, spousal role in family planning uptake was that we began to see men go with their wives to the clinic to say, oh, we've both spoken together, now we want family planning because we know that it's, it's good for our family. So we saw increase in spousal support due to the intervention. Uh, the other part that was also very important and key to us, it's that the community leaders, the religious leaders began to positively speak about family planning. So they, in fact, some of them would say, oh, check into the Holy Quran, check into the Holy Bible. It actually approved that you can space your child. Oh, it's for the health of the women. So due to the, the trainings we had with them, the, the awareness, we saw an increase uh, of positive responses from these leaders. And we know that these responses go a long way in helping people uptake the services. We're also able to reduce stock out by working with uh, the primary health care board, uh, FCT primary health care board. We were able to ensure that women who go for uh, some uh, family planning methods were able to get the method that they needed. To a large extent, there was still some sort of stock out in some months, but to a large extent, we were able to meet the needs of those women and girls. And for the menstrual cups, over 400 of those women are accepted and then are beginning to use it and they say how it's been very useful and economical so it means that they don't have to buy monthly go for a uh, menstrual towel and for the the economic empowerment grant it really helped the women because it was at the wake of covid it helps them it helped them to resuscitate their business that was already going down the, the, the drain. Of the total number of women in the camp, 54% of them were able to access family planning and continued with the method. Also, we, we had 80 women who received business grants of 20,000 Naira each, and they also received basic business training. So it was really about record keeping, about presentation of their wares, which really helped them to make even more profit. And also 429 women received and used the menstrual cups and were also taught basic things on menstrual hygiene. <laughs> Changing 
zuwa wani lokaci shekara shida ma mace za ta huta kafin kuma ta zo ta kara samuwa ta wannan gefe in bamu da problem mun ji dadin shi kuma akwai lokacin da sun taimaka mana mata mata guda 80 sun taimaka mana da taimakon kudi kowane mata 80 wannan kowaye ta samu 20 20000 aka ba su gaskiya matan mu sun ji dadi ba karamin dadi mun ji ba din yanzu har ga Allah ni da keke ne guda 1 ne yanzu na samu keke ne ya zama guda 2 kudin da nake juyawa da shi na zo na har na kare keke na diba masu aiki suna aiki a shago na gaskiya mun ji dadi wannan abu ba karamin dadi mun ji ba har ga Allah muna godiya ba karamin godiya muke yi ba Allah ya taimaka musu kamar yadda sun zo sun taimake mu Allah ya bunka sama kungiyan su wanda ma wani lokaci ko ina ne mun je duniya yanzu kungiyan gaskiya dadin shin da naji ba karami bane dadin shin da naji dun koyo shi ma ina zo wannan ina labarin mutane ma suna jin dadi gaskiya muna muku godiya sosai muna farin ciki matan mu gaba daya suna godiya while implementing this project we encountered some challenges so one was really finding a good time to track the men especially during the raining season they usually so when we go with the messages on on on, on fp most men are not at home they are not even there to listen so and it was not enough to just tell the wives or the women about it if the men have not in fact some of them specifically said see for me, I know the suffering I'm going through. I, I, I really want to take up a method after 11 children, after 8 children. But you need to talk to my husband. So it was quite challenging meeting this man at home. So we had to now working with the inaugurated uh, family planning champions to find a better time to be able to meet with the with the men another challenge we also was stock out as much as we were working with amac we were working with fct primary health care board at some point women went to the facility to the clinic and they couldn't have access to the right method or to the method that they want despite going through that and we also had the challenge of the the family planning service provider so for over 5000 population we had just one uh, provider and this provider also had needed some time off at times too so women get to the clinic and the clinic is off so we had to it was part of our advocacy to uh, amac to uh, fct primary health care board to see how we could really bring in more family planning provider and the fact that it was a male family planning provider some men had issues with that and it, it was some of the challenges that we we encountered for the women who were supported the 80 women with business grant the high inflation so some of them as much as they made some profit they they told us how it was really difficult to catch up because in fact by the time they go back to get maybe new products to sell the money was almost 50% or 100% higher than it was and just a couple of other challenges that we faced. We learned several lessons. One was the stakeholder management. So one, we're a consortium of uh, people working together. Uh, we're also family planning champions. We actually got grant from the 120 on the 40 Ingenuity Fund. And working together helped us all to bring in our different strengths, but it also meant that we needed time together to align to the different uh, activities we needed to do. So we, we actually spent more time trying to be on the same page as expected also not just for the three consortium partners also working with the federal ministry of health working with uh, the national commission for refugees migrants and internally displaced persons we had to write letters to them severally but we're glad that they were eventually in fact they came when we uh, commemorated the international uh, the world contraceptive day and they also gave in their own buy-in so really managing stakeholders we learned a lot from that because it was also important for sustainability another thing that was also very helpful for us it's uh, bringing in appropriate messaging it was also not cost effective because aside from developing messages in English also trying to find what language so while Hausa seems to be the predominant language spoken on the camp they were from different parts of uh, the northeast and even the dialects in Hausa it was still Hausa but it was different uh, 
dialects and it, it was difficult just coming to a midpoint that everybody could understand but of course with uh, the support of a social and behavioral change communication expert we were able to develop just the right message that was accepted by the community and also bringing some of them into the room to be part of the content development uh, meeting was very helpful and those were some of the lessons we learned and we, we had many outreaches and the fact that the family planning champions and some of the women were leading those outreaches really made a lot of difference. It wasn't just us going to tell them, oh, do family planning or this is what he has. It was also seeing members of their own community of the residents in the camp telling them about the importance and they had people who were uh, who were users of family planning and they were satisfied users so they could use their stories to tell other women that it was okay to take off family planning services so stand with a girl initiative would like to say a very big thank you to our other consortium partners sidani initiative as well as peach aid medical Thank you to the funding we got from Bea and John Hopkins Center for Communications Program through the uh, 120 on the 40 Ingenuity Funds for Nigeria. And to also say a very big thank you to the community leaders for giving all of their support. We're also very grateful to Talk Health Ninja as well as Solution Journalism Network for ensuring that the world hear about this. And we're hoping that even through this, more persons will be become more passionate and begin to invest in uh, the reproductive health and rights of women and girls at internally displaced persons camp.